Okay, welcome everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, I, I want to thank you again for uh, coming out in the weather. Uh, we should be good. Uh, the severe weather is not supposed to move into DFW area until 3 o'clock or later. Uh, if you're northwest of here where I, my home is, it's already there. Uh, thanks again to Jay Gilligan's and uh, Randy Ford and our bartenders today were Bailey and Mary. And uh, please don't forget uh, their little tip jar over there. I know you won't. We appreciate uh, having this place and I mean, uh, it's, it's just always available to us and, and uh, holds our large crowds when we have those. We literally had 25 cancellations today because of the weather or sickness. So, you know, that happens. Um, how many people in here served in our military? Thank you. How many people served in other militaries outside the United States? There he is. Where? Norway. Norway. They have a they have a military there, huh? I thought it was all peaceful and loving up there. <laughs> That's great. Oh, thank you. How many people civilian? All right. They don't have any clue what we went through. <laughs> Yeah, but we didn't have three squares and a roof over our head some of the time. <laughs> uh, real quickly, Jay Pellicone and uh, Jim Van Devender, where are you? Raise your hands right there at the table. They do the 100 Vets awesome event. Uh, next meeting is September 21. Happy hour starts at 6 o'clock. C.R. Smith Museum, and we'll, we'll get more notices out about that. And today, uh, I want to recognize somebody uh, here. Uh, I'd like for Jock Bethune to stand up, please. Okay, he's not going to stand up. But uh, about four years ago, in two months, I started doing these luncheons, and... Uh, and uh, just over two years ago, uh, uh, Bruce, Law, uh, Bruce Ott passed away and I ended up being uh, area director. And when I first started, I didn't have a clue, thanks to Bob Hoke. And, but this guy right here was there. I, I don't even know how many hours. I, he proofread every message I sent out. Uh, we worked hours and hours together, and finally I kind of weaned myself off of him, but every once in a while I call him and, and uh, I need help, and just a real special thanks to Jock for all he's done uh, for the Great Eagles. He's also our national newsletter uh, editor, and uh, he's uh, working diligently on that right now. Um, Today, I uh, also want to thank uh, Charlie Savage, Beverly Savage, Bob Lines. Where are you, Bob? There's Bob. Um, Cindy Dawson, Cheryl Guth, uh, Linda Matthews. She's not, she didn't tell me she had COVID, but she was sick this morning. So uh, she's not here, but always usually here. Um, is uh, Jeff Lindhart here? Not here? Okay. And, and Jan? They're not here? Oh, they are there. Jan's there. Oh, okay. Jeff's not here. Okay. All right. I uh, want to thank all of them for stepping up. And in the past, Bob Hoke, right here, past president of the Gray Eagles. He's the reason I'm doing this, so it's all his fault. And then Steve Fryer is right behind him. 
uh, past treasurer, and then right here today helping out Melanie Jarvie, past president, the first lady and only president of the Gray Eagles. Miss Neehawk with the AA Credit Union is here today. And um, I'm really seeing an effort on the part of American Airlines to recognize the legacy. Years ago, Mr. Crandall stepped away from all retirement groups and said, we just can't do them all. And uh, we severed ties with the retirees. That is totally going away. Uh, and American Airlines is right on top of the contributions you all have made to this company. And I see it every single week. And the recognition that the Gray Eagles get uh, from uh, the flight department and their support is absolutely uh, amazing. Okay, uh, retirement dinner, May 6th. $50 a person if you want to go. Um, you need to contact Tony Kennard at the APA. It's at the Grapevine um, Hilton Lakes uh, Hotel. It's gonna be a really nice evening. Plates, uh, glassware, silverware. There'll be, uh, D yeah, no paper plates. Huh? DJ and uh, There'll be, a, there'll be a lot of uh, a good time. They'll, they'll have a DJ and maybe a photo booth and uh, come and wish these new cap, uh, these, uh, the new retirees, of which there are 81. It's hard to transition. I was talking about new captains. Okay, so uh, there are 81, uh, and 23 of those 81 are already Gray Eagles. So we hope to uh, maybe attract a few more so feel free to join us that evening uh, tentatively the next the 2024 convention is uh, planned for the last week in october the first few days in november and embassy suites in grapevine so uh, that uh, is coming up sponsorship for right now for these luncheons that's a dead issue we're just going to leave that alone. Uh, the tax considerations uh, that are, are twofold, and uh, it's very difficult to put those together. So that idea, the good thing about it, I learned a lot about the policy manual and how to say, uh, you're an idiot to myself. <laughs> okay, without further ado, and I probably forgot some stuff. I'll try to catch it up at the end. This is Captain John DeLue. He is the Managing Director of Safety and Efficiency. Thank you for putting that up there. <laughs> and uh, that's known to us as Fuqua, or Fuqua, however you want to. Uh, that's what I knew it as. And so uh, without further ado, Captain John DeLue. It's a little bit more than folk by actually. We'll get into that. Uh, so you know they always have a day like National Grandparents Day and you know National you know Childhood Day. Do you all know what today is? It's not on your phone. No. It's a true day. Today is actually World Pilots Day. It is really. I'm not. I'm not kidding you. It really is World Pilots Day. So I thought that was ironic that you had the Gray Eagles today on World Pilots Day. Great trip. Great. Bad plan. marketing on my part. Yeah, yeah, it is actually World Pilots Day. So, um, all right, well, thank you very much. Uh, as um, Alan mentioned, thanks for the intro. Uh, I'm the currently the Managing Director of Safety and Efficiency at American, which I absolutely like my job. I'm also a 77 captain. And uh, so before I go into I'd like to recognize a few people. So Lisa Johnson here, Captain Johnson, she's on the 73. She's on my team. And I have her come here to, uh, for support, of course. But I'm going to talk about our safety programs at American Airlines. So we have we have the world famous safety team, but not because of me. A lot of us are here, Lisa, myself, we've been here years. But in the group here, we have some people who actually were the fathers of a lot of these programs. So I, I can't talk here first without recognizing them. So Rich Cunningham is over here. Rich, please raise his hand. John Bendebenner, Jay Pellicone, we've got Mike McGinnis over here. Greg Holm is over here. Languling, of course, and if you don't recognize his names, you should know them because everything I'm talking about today 
was built on the process. They started rich for sure on ASAP and John got a huge history here. So it's kind of nice to be in the room with some of the old safety folks here. Um, all right, so before I start that, I have a question for you. So it's already World Pilot's Day. Since this is the Gray Eagles, what is the oldest airport in the world? Does anybody know what the oldest airport is in the world? Still, it's been co it's continuous airport the entire time. San Diego. Nope, it is College Park Airport in Maryland, which Wilbur Wright started. The University of Maryland? Well, just College Park, Maryland, that's all I know. It's it's a public airport, it's the oldest continuing operating airport in the world. Just a little bit of trivia. How about what is the oldest continuous airport that has tickets and commercial flying. Anybody know? That might be a picture. If you don't know, it's actually Hamburg, Germany. It's the oldest continuous operating commercial airport. But if you read it, it's got terminal planes established in 1911. So while America was building its aviation suit airplanes, what did Germany have? The Zeppelins. So that's why they're the oldest continuing airport in the world. All right, a little bit of trivia, kind of get you, you know, the great eagle blood flowing here. Um, all right, so safety. So American Airlines, we are, as you know, all of you have been here, our legacy is built on what most of you in the room have done. We have this commitment to safety, and I've always asked the, uh, the new hire pilots, and uh, I asked the captains, you know, do you tell your friends and your neighbors not to fly in American Airlines because of safety? Of course we don't. Nobody in the room does this. So we're committed to safety at this airline. I think we have a long history of it, we're proud of it. And these are some of the programs that Alan was starting to mention before he got off the stage. You've got ASAP, FOQA, some of you know about the LOSA program, but we certainly have a new program called LIP. So I'll spend a little time on each one, give you some cool pictures and uh, some examples, and uh, at the end we'll you know, take some questions on it. So our ASAP program has been around. We are the oldest ASAP program in the industry, started in 1993-94, uh, the flight ASAP program. Folks like Rich and John were involved with that. Um, and we're the most, uh, I would say the most advanced ASAP program too. So this is the world we live in, and this is now, this is not you know pre-COVID, this is post-COVID, and you know, as you can tell, if you fly in our aircraft, you're pretty busy. So there's a lot of opportunities for our ASAP reports. Just so you know, we get about 800 flight ASAP reports a month on the average. So that, that's a lot, and we don't advertise ASAP like they did 20 years ago, because business is pretty good actually. So we have plenty of our pilots, they're glad to report the ASAP, it protects their certificate, you have no more cake and company discipline if you're accepting the program. So we've got a great culture of doing that. That ASAP that was started years ago in flight has morphed over to the dispatch program, which is also quite uh, advanced. But we have a cabin ASAP program. We've got tech ops ASAP. We've got central load planning ASAP. And the latest and greatest was our ground ASAP program, which we call GSAP. So all of those managers work for Rusty Pruitt, who works for me. They all sit in the same area. They get to communicate every day. So they don't pick up the phone and call. And that's how we share the hazards in our industry, in our airline, and uh, try to fix it and mitigate these uh, hazards, depending on the risk. Uh, note just a couple slides here. John, no pictures here. 